Okay, in this video, we will be covering 2.1 addition property of equality. And so in this section, there are, I believe, 11 problems. And so we're going to go ahead and work on those. And I've written examples of each one. So the problem started with z plus 9 equal to negative 17. And so the goal for these problems is to solve for your variable. So to isolate your variable, get that letter completely by itself. And then you would know the value um, for that variable. So since it says plus nine, in order for me to undo an addition of nine, you have to subtract nine. And what I do to one side of an equation, I need to do it to the other side to keep these two statements equivalent to each other, okay? So what you do to this side, you have to do to that side. So when I minus the nine over here, well, nine minus nine means the nines are gone. And so all I have is the Z by itself. But over here, negative 17 minus nine is actually negative 26. So negative 17 minus nine is negative 26. And so then I do know the value for Z and it is negative 26. For number two, we have this expression. Again, I'm trying to isolate from my variable. So this is the guy that I want to get by itself. And in order for me to do that, I'm gonna have to get rid of this minus 12. So to get rid of a minus 12, you do the opposite, which is a plus 12. So negative 12 plus 12 means I don't owe anybody any more 12s. And then if I do the same on the other side, negative 15 plus 12 is actually negative three. And so now I know that the value of X is negative three. Here we had negative five plus X. So it depends on what the sign was. I am obviously adding negative five. Um, and so you could think of it as subtracting negative five, but if you have a negative, a subtract and a negative together, that actually means to add. What I usually do is I usually go based off of this sign. If it's a negative symbol, then I'm going to add that value. So I wanna get rid of this negative five, which means I need to add five. If I owe somebody five, you wanna pay them that five bucks, right? So you're, clear, you're cleared of that balance. So if I add five to both sides, negative five plus five is zero. So those numbers go away. I get just this positive X all by itself. And then over here, negative seven plus five is a negative two. And so now I know the value of X and it's negative two. For number four, we have x plus three over 10 equals to negative three over five. So I'm adding a three tenths. So to get rid of this three tenths, I need to subtract three tenths on both sides to keep it equivalent. That'll knock this out on the left side. And on the right hand side, we can put that in the calculator. So I'm gonna put negative fraction three over five minus three over and I get this negative nine tenths that they have here for X. Now for number five, we have this. So if they're subtracting a fraction, you wanna add that fraction to both sides. And if I type in the calculator nine over seven plus 22 over 21, it does pop out 29 over 21. I do use a calculator here. Here, same thing like that one. It's saying I'm adding 2.8, right? But whatever this sign is, if this guy's positive, then I'm gonna use a subtract. If this guy was negative, I'm gonna use a plus, okay? So since he's positive, I'm gonna subtract 2.8 on both sides. 2.8 minus 2.8 means that it's gone. And I just have X. And in the calculator, 7.7 .7 minus 2.8 turned out to be 4.9. Now, number seven is a lot like this problem, but it just has fractions. Okay, so my variable is here. This is the number I wanna get rid of. It is a negative. So in order for me to get rid of this three halves, I'm gonna to have to add three halves. And I'm gonna do the same thing on both sides of this equation. Over here, negative three halves plus three halves means the three halves is gonna go away. But over here, if I type in my calculator, negative three over four plus three over two, it does pop out three over four. And so my value for X is three over four. Okay. Now for number eight, it's kind of the same thing as that other problem. So I have a negative 3.2. So in order to get rid of that, I'm gonna have to add 3.2 on both sides. 
that gives me this positive m all by itself and negative 3.2 plus 3.2 actually cancels also but you have to have something on this side of the equal sign and so you put zero if you get nothing left over there and so the value of m is zero for number nine we have this problem now notice that you have variables on both sides and that hasn't happened to us just yet in this section, okay? So because there's variables on both sides, the first thing you wanna do is put all of your variables onto the same side. So I always move my variables over here. The only time, um, I will always do that. I will always move my variables over there. The only time you'll ever see my variable over here on this side is like in those other problems where you had a number and then you had a number and plus or minus, right? And then your letter, okay? In this case, the, ver the only variable here was this one and it's on the right-hand side. And so I left it alone. I just subtracted this number on both sides, right? And then you had Y equals to whatever your answer was. This will only happen, it will only happen where the Y is on the right if that's the only variable that's there and it just happens to stay there. But if you do have variables on both sides, you'll notice in all of the videos, I will move everything over to the left-hand side. We will get to some problems where I will move them over to the right-hand side later, if at all in this course. Um, so, and we'll talk about those special cases later. But for now, if you have variables on both sides, move them over to the left, okay? So I'm gonna take this 5y, and since it's positive, I'm gonna subtract 5y. If you want to move a whole term over, you have to add or subtract. So when I do that, 5y minus 5y means all the y's are gone and all I have is this negative one. Here, 6y minus 5y means I have one y left, but remember, we don't ever write one y, we just write y. And so there's my one y right there, very plain and visible, right? So now I have y plus one equal to negative one. I need to get rid of this to solve for y. So if it's a plus one, that means I need to minus one and do the same on both sides. So this is gone, I have y all by itself and negative one minus one is negative two. And so then the value for y is negative two. For number 10, I did the same thing. So I took this y's and I moved them over. Here it was subtracting 5y, so then I added 5y. And I did the same thing on both sides. On the left-hand side, negative 4y plus 5y is a positive 1y. But again, you don't ever write the one there. It's just y. So, and the 5y's are gone over here. Then I need to get rid of this thing to get the y by itself. So I'm gonna minus five on both sides and I get y equal to three. And so three is my solution there. Now for number 11, notice that there's parentheses. So I do have to distribute that three to get rid of those parentheses. So this becomes three X, this becomes minus 15. Then I minus the three X because it was a positive three X. So I ended up with four X minus 20 equal to negative 15. I added the 20 over to both sides and I ended up with four X equal to five. Um, and this is actually not taught until the next lesson, so I don't know why this problem is in this homework assignment. But if you're multiplying x by four, you need to do the opposite, which is to divide by four. So I divided by four on both sides. That cancels out this x, and I get x equal to five over four. So we will talk more about how to solve for x when you have something multiplied or divided by it in the next section. So we'll get to that concept in more depth in the next um, session. But that is it for this section. So I will see you in the next video.